In building new, differentially connected notions of art and research, one can consider the concept of intersubjectivity, which itself arises out of a dichotomy of objectivity and subjectivity. I understand it to be a descriptor for the critical analysis, comparison and connection of artistic experience between parties in a peer network, in order to discuss the strength and originality of its knowledge. This knowledge can be of a technical nature, thus connecting to the natural sciences, a discursive nature, connecting to the social sciences, or an aesthetic nature, connecting to artistic practice. Badura also notes that the classical concept of intuitive knowledge needs modification to become academic, and that intuitive knowledge is at most only valid as a precursor to true knowledge, which can then be transsubjectively declared in a terminologically rational justification. According to him, one must also establish an overarching reference point, and it is on the basis of this that one can make research claims. What these are in specific detail may vary from project to project. Regardless of the exact term, each of which carries specific connotations, the concepts of inter and or trans subjectivity are intended to connect differentially to the fields of science and art. In scientific terms, it can relate to validation, whereby statements are tested for truthfulness by reproducing methods and comparing results. In artistic terms, it can relate to art criticism, where the quality of art products are discussed in an openly subjective manner, and where critiques can be compared, a sort of weight of consensus can be built. In terms of artistic research, I posit an extrapolation of the concept of resonance, which is a phenomenon applicable to both exact measurements, for example altitude, and the inexact persuasiveness of an idea, as per the saying, it resonates with me. The extent to which the knowledge of one artistic researcher resonates with another can be measured twofold. On one hand, quantitatively, via the breadth of reception, which is to say how many recipients the knowledge has received, and on the other hand, qualitatively, via the depth of reception, which is to say how deeply the recipient was impacted by the knowledge. Following the metaphor, different resonances can compound one another to become stronger and or create new resonances, change the quality of existing ones, and even cancel each other out. In short, these resonating bodies influence one another, and one can attempt to trace this influence by measuring or commenting on how intersubjectively resonant a given piece of knowledge is. Some examples are the footnoting of any sort of text, which demonstrates discursive resonance the adaption of a piece of technology or a given artistic technique, which demonstrates innovative resonance, as well as the evidential adoption of artistic practice, which demonstrates practical aesthetic resonance. Although standards for textual citation and technological innovation draw on well-established and common practices going back many centuries, there are very few codifications for aesthetic citation. Although some artists build schools or genres for their practice, which may happen in their own times and may contain traditionalist elements or even textual dogma, most knowledge on the mutual influence of artistic practitioners is only established by third parties well after the fact. As it stands, there is no strong, widely understood and transparent framework for understanding, measuring and utilising the mutual influence of artists that can be of service to the artists themselves whilst practising. It is here that the concept of intersubjective resonance in artistic research can play a part. It may give artistic researchers a framework to collaborate in a more cognitive and self-aware way. Yet this element of group awareness is not the whole story, and may only be secondary. Klein describes intersubjectivity as a secondary negotiation between third parties, and sees the primary stage as the embodied and felt artistic experience of the individual. For me, be it as a first or second stage, 
Intersubjectivity goes hand in hand with the process of acquiring individual metacognition of one's own artistic practice, what Lazarevich calls a heightened self-reflexivity about one's own artistic practice, and the ability to position this practice in relation to wider artistic and non-artistic discourses. Such metacognition benefits both the artists themselves, who can come to understand their own practice more deeply and precisely, as well as their communities, since it builds interdisciplinary bridges out of the artistic tuition and into domains of interpersonal communication. Therefore, metacognition is both the process and the result of self-reflection on one's own artistic practice and its greater context, which is openly disclosed and communicated so that others can understand it, relate to it, and negotiate its resonance with them intersubjectively, be it through discursive citation, technical innovation, and or aesthetic influence. Together, metacognition of the individual and intersubjectivity of the group relate to the opening lines of this course, where a potential aim of artistic research is posited as an increased transparency on the artistic process. These two concepts may provide tools to not only unlock and connect, but also more cognitively shape the intu intuitive artistic knowledge of individuals and their groups. Were this to occur over an extended period, in which important artistic thinkers take part, we may make significant discoveries as to the nature of experience, artistic or indeed otherwise.